So let's think about it. We serve people with brain injury. What do you usually think of when you think of brain injury in terms of what aspects of functioning are affected? Sometimes physical things. A lot of times it's attention, memory, planning, organizing, decision making. All of those things that we lump into that word cognition. Here's the good news. I'm going to read from you the, the part of a, a heading from a recent article that was published in the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation in April of last year. There is substantial evidence to support interventions for attention, memory, social communication skills, executive function, and for comprehensive, holistic, neuropsychologic rehabilitation after brain injury. So what we're doing works. And this is from a review of over 370 studies. So pretty powerful evidence that cognitive rehabilitation works. Now the question is, what is it? And the answer to that is really complex. Every brain injury is unique. Every person is unique. And so every plan for rehab is unique. But generally, we can say that it falls into several different categories. And that it is a systematically applied set of medical and therapeutic services that improve cognitive functioning and participation in activities that might be affected by difficulties in one or more cognitive domains. Now that's a mouthful, right? That means if I've got a challenge with attention and with memory and maybe also with planning things and following through on them, then what I need is some cognitive rehabilitation that works on those things. We try to approach cognitive rehabilitation in a hierarchical fashion. If I'm not paying attention, it's not likely I'm going to remember something. So it's important to address the attention challenge first. And we've got lots of ways of doing that. We've got exercises that teach people to pay attention to specific specific items. And once we've got that under the belt, then we might ramp it up and ask you to pay attention to something while something else is going on. So you have to use your selective attention abilities and exercise those. Once attention is a little more intact, then we can begin working on things like memory. And I think all of you who are are in rehab or who have family members in rehab know about that om, uh, omnipresent planner, organizer system, something to help us keep track of our day and what we have going on. And the nice thing about that is that that's something that we all use, whether we've got a brain injury or not. You know, most of us are addicted to our blackberries and tablets and big paper planners or whatever system we use. So a person with a brain injury certainly doesn't look out of place if they're using that compensatory strategy for memory or for those planning and organi organizing challenges. <clears throat> what we want to do is use a treatment model that's grounded in theory. And that's a little bit of what I just spoke about, that hierarchy. How do we approach rehabilitation so that it's maximally effective? We want to provide sufficient repetition. You know, heard the old adage, practice makes perfect, right? It's true. We want to base decisions on how we guide treatment based on how a person is performing. Do we need to step back a, a little bit? Do we need to move forward at a quicker pace? That's really dependent on the person that we're serving at, at that time. And we want to facilitate what's called generalization from the start of treatment. 
So we'll have specific individual sessions dealing with COG rehab and then we'll hopefully have some opportunities to be with a person out in the community. Say, okay, now use those skills out here in the real world. So that's really what cognitive rehabilitation is in a, in a very brief nutshell. And I look forward to speaking with you, getting to know you, and talking about cognitive rehabilitation more as the evening goes on. Thank you.